Well, hello everybody! Today we're going to take a quick look at The Iron Claw. This was written and directed by Sean Durkin and stars Zac Efron and Jeremy Allen White. This is based on the tragic story of the Von Erich wrestling family, brothers who all became wrestlers for their father's Texas-based promotion, World Class Championship Wrestling. If you don't know, Fritz and Doris Von Erich had six boys and one of them made it past the age of 33. Needless to say, this is not a feel-good movie. The Von Erichs are an important family in wrestling history for many reasons, good and bad. This goes back to a time when pro wrestling was more of a regional business, although Vince McMahon around this time was starting to take WWF National and one by one wiping out all of the regional territories. The Von Erichs were the kings of wrestling in Texas. Now, nepotism certainly played a role in that because they were wrestling for their father's promotion, and the movie doesn't really address that. But it's not like they didn't put in the work, and they were popular as hell. And they probably have the most tragic story of any wrestling family, even more than the hearts, and that is saying something. Kevin Von Erich is the only one who is still alive today, and that includes his older brother Jack Jr., who died at the ripe old age of six. And we don't actually see Jack Jr. in the movie until the very end, and when we do... Ooh, Jesus Christ, that's a punch to the gut. And it amazes me that any member of the Von Erich family would want anything to do with wrestling after all that's happened. And yet, Carrie's daughter was a wrestler for a few years. Both of Kevin's sons are wrestlers now. There are some bright spots with the acting in this movie. Efren in particular, I mean, he put in the work. He is jacked. The wrestling scenes in the movie look very good, and credit to Chavo Guerrero, who was the wrestling consultant for this movie. And I did like the scene where Kevin is explaining to his future wife, Pam, exactly how the business works. Yes, everything is predetermined. Getting a title is basically like a job promotion. And they don't shy away from all the bad stuff that goes behind the scenes, including the drug and steroid use. I did like White as Kerry Von Erich, especially when we get to the point where he has his motorcycle accident and has to have part of his leg amputated. The pain that he is in, physical and emotional, is just all over his face, and it's a really strong performance. And I'm still amazed that Kerry actually got back in the ring after all of that. With a prosthetic, of course. And I was a little surprised that the movie doesn't really show how Kerry kept his amputation hidden from most people. Except for his family and a couple of close friends, most people, until the day he died, had no idea he was an amputee because he went to great lengths to hide it, even to the point of showering with his boots on. I also want to draw attention to Kevin Anton, who played Harley Race in this movie, and he was dead on. That was a perfect performance. On the other hand, we have the guy who played Ric Flair, and he was... How can I put this politely? The drizzling shits. He didn't act like Ric Flair, he didn't sound like Ric Flair, even his woo sounded wrong. I mean, how do you screw that up? The wig was really the only thing that clued me into the fact that this was supposed to be Flair. Speaking of wigs, Maxwell Jacob Friedman has a brief appearance in this movie, and... I don't know where they found that wig, but oh, that did not look good. He basically has a cameo as, I believe he was supposed to be Lance Von Erich, who was the only person who had the Von Erich name that wasn't actually related to the family by blood. It's a period of the Von Erich history that the movie kind of glosses over. They don't really explain who this guy is supposed to be, but it's clear from Zac Efron's facial expressions that this is someone that Kevin really did not want to form a tag team with. I personally thought the story in this movie got off to a very slow start, and as much as I hate to say it, it doesn't really get interesting until the Von Erichs start dying. Everything leading up to the death of David Von Erich was so slow and didn't really give me a reason to care about any of these people, and I'm a wrestling fan. I wasn't really invested until the second half of the movie, which unfortunately is when everything goes to shit. There were a few historical inaccuracies that I noticed in the movie. Of course, the biggest one is the removal of the youngest Von Erich brother, Chris. In this movie, he does not exist. This movie's version of Mike Von Erich is basically a combination of Mike and Chris. Durkin has acknowledged the removal of Chris from the story and explained one more tragedy probably would have been too much, and he has a point. The movie would also lead you to believe that Kevin was the only one who got married, which was not the case. Carrie was married and had children. I think David was married a couple of times. It was just a little weird that Kevin's marriage was the only one the movie chose to acknowledge. And they only showed Kevin's sons in the movie, even though I believe he has a couple of daughters and they might have been born first. 
But I do understand why they focused on the sons because of the message this movie was trying to send, and it's a good message. And I did find the portrayal of Fritz and Doris von Erich to be a little odd, which is no fault of the actors. Holt McCallany and Maura Tierney are both great. But there's a line in the movie, and it's also in the trailer, Mom tried to protect us with God, Dad tried to protect us with wrestling. I did not get the impression from watching the movie that either of those things were true. Mom didn't do shit to protect the boys, and there is very little mention of God at all, apart from, like, one scene where we see the family attending church. And Fritz wasn't doing shit to protect them either. He was just trying to live vicariously through his sons and hopefully get them the NWA world title that he never had. If the movie has a villain, it's definitely him. Overall, I do think it's a good movie, but there are some issues with the narrative that keep it from being a great movie. If you're a wrestling fan, I would say it's at least worth a rental. If you're not a wrestling fan or don't know much about the Von Erichs and want to learn more about them, I don't know that this movie is the best way to do it. Honestly, you're probably better off just watching their episode of Dark Side of the Ring. And that's all I have to say about the Iron Claw. Till next time, take care.